Here's my assistant, Ethan. Um, very nervous. This is Daz's Comic Book Showcases, episode 69, and my first ever attempt at going live. Yeah, I've got a ton of books here, guys. We're showing so many random Marvel minor keys. This is part six. Ah, it's good to be live, finally. Like I say, I am nervous. So many great books, though. Some that are valuable, some that are on the rise, some that mean something to me, and some that are pretty scarce. You've even got a few sign books thrown on board. Now, like I say, I'm not sure if anybody's watching. In fact, I don't think there are at the moment. But this is more of a test effort for me. So let's get into the books. Starting with the letter P. And we're going to start with Pulse. And this is issue number 11. And this is the first cameo appearance of Daniela Cage. Danielle Cage. And uh, she came to fruition most recently in the Thor series. Danielle Cage is the daughter of Jessica Jones and Luke Cage. Just a pretty darn good book. Ah, my good friend, Lyric Magic Moments, my first ever live subscriber. Hiya, buddy. Great to hear from you. Just let me know in the comments, mate, if you've got any of these books. I'm going to be getting through tons and tons. Oh, I've got a second watcher now. So that's issue 11 of The Pulse. And what did I pay for that one? Just 50p. Happy days. We go from issue 11 into issue 13 and this is the first appearance of well the first full appearance of Danielle Cage this one seems to go for the more money I often prefer the cameos up next we got a few Punisher books and uh, always been a fan of the Punisher and of course John Berthnaut looks like he is uh, going to be returning you know me Lyric I'm always on the hunt any opportunity and soon mate hopefully we will be able to hunt together so like I say John Berthnall is going to be returning as the Punisher I just been reading that Charlie Cox is supposedly going to first appear in the Hawkeye TV show so they're integrating those Marvel Netflix heroes so we're going to start with the first volume of Punisher and this is issue number four Lieberman okay and uh, surprisingly, I don't think he ever appeared in any of the movies, but he's a big integral part of the Punisher universe. Up next, a later volume, and this is Punisher issue 8. And this is the first appearance of, the, of a villain called The Russian. And the villain appeared in the first Punisher movie. Uh, actually, was it the first Punisher? No, I think Dolph Lundgren's was the first Punisher movie, wasn't it? It was the second one. And uh, he had a big scrap with the Russian. Moving on. We've got issue five of the Punisher Max series. Ah, three watches now, but it looks well, two, no, three, I don't know. But uh, if you uh, are in the uh, chat, guys, please just say hello so I know you're there. Um, I am such a, a novice to this. And uh, like I say, starting out, I'm not expecting great things. But any support would be very welcome. Oh, you've seen that Punisher 8, have you, mate? Yeah. It's a it's a it's an undervalued key, I think. It's a character that was in my encyclopedia. And you know I was talking about my encyclopedias. But the Russian, he was a big old unit and uh really had a great smackdown. The fight lasted about 15, 20 minutes, if I recall, from the movie. Now this one, Punisher Max, issue five. This is the first appearance of the Bullseye character that was in the Daredevil TV show on Netflix and a character that appeared in season three. And this is the first appearance of the Shelton Pendergrass Bullseye. Oh, hi, Chop and Drop. <laughs> Chop and Drop, great to see you, pal. Brilliant, thank you for showing up. Yeah, like I say, I have the first appearance of the original uh, Bullseye, but this is the character that appeared in the Netflix show. Moving on, we've got Punisher issue number one from the next volume. And this is the first appearance of a character that appeared in one of my favorite TV shows. 
He was a recurring character, and that was Jessica Jones. And this is the first appearance of Detective, uh, sorry, Detective Clemens. Detective Clemens. And I think he ended up shooting himself, if I'm not mistaken, after the uh, Purple Man took over. So uh, a nice minor key if you're into your Marvel Netflix shows. £3.29, usually missing. This is Punisher Max. This is issue 31. And I love that cover. And this is the first appearance of the Barracuda. Barracuda. Now I've sold a couple of these in the past for double figures. Pretty scarce book, like I said, when you're looking through the Punisher runs. Pay £2 for that one in the Thornbury Com. 2019. I understand, guys. I've, I've picked a pretty lousy time to be streaming. Um, what with tea time and everything here in the UK. And, of course, we've got the uh, Wales European uh, Football Championship. So a lot of people are probably watching that too. Uh, up next, we've got Punisher Warzone. Issue number seven, and I don't know how many of you know about this book, but this is the first appearance of the second Punisher, who was actually female. And that character was Lynn Michaels. Lynn Michaels. Paid a pound for that one. Again, Birmingham, 2019. Thanks a million, you two, for showing up. It means a lot to me. Up next, we have Punisher Warzone, issue 24, Suicide Run. And this is... a. Uh, a character that was a big part of the second season of the Punisher TV show. This is the first appearance of Amy Bendix. And that was a character, uh, I think she was portrayed as a teen uh, character in the teenage character in the second season. And Punisher was tasked with protecting her. There was a real brutal bar uh, fight in season two. Paid £2.99 for that. A bit of an undervalued book, really. Let's get into some Quasar. Good guys. If you're still with me, I, I've got tons of books to get through. I'll go as quickly as I can. But Quasar has got some pretty nice... Yeah, I, I think so, Lyric. Um, you know what? When I, when I go hunting in the shops, there's a couple of characters I don't really know too much about when it comes to the keys, and that's Deadpool and The Punisher. And I'm going to be changing that when moving forwards. Um, I think it's a little untapped market for me. I don't have hardly any. But like I say, that war zone, there's a couple of issues 7 and 24 are, are, are really uh, undervalued in my opinion. Let's get in some Quasar books because Quasar has got some uh, nice keys in that run. This is issue Venom outside of a Spider-Man book. So the first time he is away from the web slinger. Issue 6. This is a nice little book, I think. Quasar Issue 9. I've had two or three of these in the past. And this is the first appearance of Captain Atlas. Captain Atlas. And uh, he is uh, a.k.a. the Titanium Man. And uh, Captain Atlas appeared in the Captain Marvel uh, movie as part of the Star Force team. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Lyric, there. I, I do think uh, Quasar is just a matter of time. Um, yeah, an under, underused character for sure. Um, I'm amazed we haven't seen him in, in even animated form, I don't think. Uh, moving on, we've got Quasar issue 30. And this is the first appearance of the, uh, well, first Venomized character on a comic book cover. And uh, there we go. If you can just see there, guys, we've got Thor. He was the first Venomized character. Yeah, he doesn't appear in story, just on the cover, which is a little interesting. This is an alternate reality version of uh, an alien symbiote Thor. £3 for these. I mean, these are all cheapest chips keys, guys. Moving on. This one I, I like as well. Another undervalued book, in my opinion. This is the first... Uh, this is Quasar issue 32. And this is the first appearance of Korath. The Pursuer. And he was in the... Uh, he's, he's played by um, a, a black black actor who uh, was in... I saw him in The Quiet Place too the other night. Great actor. He was in things like uh, oh, Gladiator as well. He was, I think he was the Gladiator's mate in, in the movie, Russell Crowe. But Corrath the Pursuer, like I say, was in the Guardians of the Galaxy first movie. And uh, I paid a pound for that one. 
I sent actually a, a beat up copy to my uh, good friend Lyric Magic Moments of this, I believe. This is Red Sonia, issue number one. Yep, and uh, obviously the first solo series featuring Red Sonia. Of course, we are getting a Red Sonia movie. I can't remember the name of the actress who was lined up for the role. But Red Sonia's previous appearance to this came in a Marvel feature Red Sonia. Of course, it is in that Conan 23, which I picked up, I think, for a couple of quid. Here's a little bit of a novelty book. Now, like I say, I'm moving through the alphabet and we're sticking with R. Ren and Stimpy, issue number one. Again, it is a show. Yeah, well, I just wish it was in higher grade for you, mate. But um, I'm one of those ones, you've seen me, when it comes to the keys, mate, I don't care how they come. If they're cheap, I'll take them. You know, you see, you saw what I picked up with that first Morbius. Uh, did a bit of doctor into it. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to leave keys there for, for pennies. Yeah, Ren and Stimpy, this is a show I've never actually watched. And uh, a lot of people tell me it is a lot of good fun. Uh, obviously, we got the first appearance of Ren Hook and uh, Stimpson J Cat. Now, this is a Ren and uh, S Stimpy uh, scratch and sniff uh, air fowler in this, which comes in the back of the book. Just crazy stuff. But I, I paid nine quid for that, and I probably overpaid. But it was just a book I've never seen before. And this book can go upwards of 30 quid on a good day. Okay, uh, I have been watching the Runaways TV series on and off. It's okay. There was a character that came into the second season, I believe, and that was a character called Xavin, and he appeared in Runaways issue number seven. Ah, you've seen it, Abby Lyric. I, I must admit, I, have, I, I think my brother-in-law and my daughter keep telling me to give it a go. Uh, if it's anything like The Simpsons, I think it's a bit more adult, though. There we go. Runaways issue seven. The first appearance of Zavin was in the Runaways TV show. Uh, sticking with that same volume, I think it is the, uh, the second volume of Runaways. We've got issue number nine. And this is the first appearance of Father uh, Lantern. Uh, I'm going to be amazed if a lot of you know about this. this is, um, Father Lantern was in the Daredevil TV show. He was a... A character that obviously Daredevil visited to confess his sins. And uh, he appeared in Daredevil and the Defenders TV show. That was a nice gift. Uh, Christmas of 2017 from my daughter. I've been watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Enjoying it. I've nearly finished season four. And we got uh, the first appearance of Agent Melinda May. Agent Leo Fitz and Agent Gemma Simmons. Obviously, Fitz and Simmons are the tech nerds. And Melinda Bay, uh, May just kicks butt, really. But uh, undervalued key, in my opinion. £2.94 for that on eBay. Up next, uh, Shield issue number nine. And this is the first appearance of a character that appeared in the Marvel Rising animated uh, there was a Halloween movie came, that came from them. And that, this is the first appearance of Warwolf, who was Martin Rayner. And one of those guys, if I find a live action or animated first appearance, I'm, I'm all over it for cheap. £2.49 for that. Okay, we've got a signed book next. This is Sabretooth, issue number one. Yeah, I think so, Lyric. You know, and... Uh, They've now made the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Marvel Legacy, haven't they, on Disney Plus, which I find pretty insulting because how can you say that that is not part of the MCU now when you've got characters like, uh, I'm just trying to think, you've got Nick Fury in it, you've got Maria Hill, you've got Lady Sif, big characters in the MCU, Jasper Sitwell, and yet now it, they're just saying it's not even canon, so I don't know, I'm a little disappointed with that, but uh, it is what it is. Apparently Quake, though, from that show, is rumoured to be appearing in the Secret Invasion, uh, Nick Fury-led Disney Plus show. Okay, like I said, Sabretooth, issue number one, and I picked this up. Uh, hi, Coffee Breath. Lovely to have you here, Paul. There's only two or three of us, but we're having a little chat and uh, just showing off some keys that some you'll know about and some perhaps you won't. Yeah, like I say, Sabretooth number one. I picked this up for two quid in 8-Bit Planet. 
in Bristol. Check out my comic hunting adventures videos. And uh, this is signed by Mark Texera, as you can see here. And he was the cover artist, penciler and inker. The only reason I picked it up, it came with a COA. And apparently he is not putting out too much content in these days. So you never know, it could be a scarce book. Here's a book that uh, I should have showed in my Captain America showcase, but I didn't. But it's a, it's a recent pickup for me. And, of course, we had that Falcon and the Winter Soldier a bit disappointed. One Division, I would give probably about a 6.5 out of 10. Uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier out of the three shows so far was definitely the pick of them for me. I'd probably give that a 7.5, maybe an 8 on a good day. And this low key for me is just probably the letdown series so far. It's probably about a six out of ten for me. And I was expecting this to be the best. I'm a big fan of both Owen Wilson and Tom Hiddleston. But it's, there's not enough action at the moment. I know they're all about character development, but I want to see a bit more action. But like I say, get off track there. MCU, we were introduced to this character. This is Sam Wilson, Captain America, issue five. And this is the first appearance, cover appearance of Joaquim Torres as Falcon. So basically the second Falcon, we saw uh, Joaquim, Torre, or Joaquim Torres in that show. Um, he first appears in uh, issue six as the Falcon. Yeah, I've got to agree with you, Larry. It's just, it's a bit slow. I, I think there's potential with this new Lady Loki character, but I think that this woman... Well, they're saying, is, is, Sylvie, is it Sylvie Lushton? Is she the second Entrantress? Well, I have that book that's really blowing up at the moment. £1.32 for that uh, Joaquin Torres book anyway. I'm going to show a book lyric that you... Hey, Simon the Sorcerer. Hi, Paul. Yeah, it has been done, hasn't it? It's nothing really happening with it. I'm expecting... I would love to see a, 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 some sort of mention with Kang the Conqueror. Because um, obviously we've got... Ramo uh, Ravona uh, Renslayer and I've got her first appearance in Avengers 23 here's a book lyric that you uh, AOK'd me and this is um, a, a great issue this is a Scarlet Witch issue 10 remember sending me this one lyric great book uh, we've got a first there's a few minor appearances in it but this is obviously blowing up due to the uh, One Division show and some uh, hey comic drill hello buddy great to see you Thanks for supporting me. <laughs> I'm quite nervous. But this is a book, like I say, I got from Lyric as a Christmas present in 2018. And now on a good day, this can go for about 25 to 30 quid. So thank you so much for that, mate. Lovely artwork on that book. Okay, uh, Secret Avengers. Yeah, it is. A, it's, a, it's a stunning cover, I think. Uh, Secret Avengers, issue 23. I think with Agent Venom, we're going to get s somewhere down the line. Of course, Agent Venom is Flash Thompson. Uh, we've got the death of the fourth Ant-Man in this. The first appearance of Deathlock, Miss America. And uh, the death of Yawada. But Flash Thompson's first appearance as the third Venom is, in, of course, in Amazing Spider-Man issue 654. And I've had several copies of that. Hey, Lyric, thanks ever so much for dropping by, mate. I know it's tea time here in the UK, so understand that. Uh, up next, Secret Avengers issue 33. Uh, this is the first full appearance of a character that some of you might not know about, and that is the Black Ant, a life model decoy of the de uh, deceased Eric O'Grady. Okay, 245 for that on eBay. I think that was an encyclopedia character. I've spoken about them before. If I pick up those... Uh, I got an encyclopedia of Marvel and DC. I love to pick up the characters. It's a great Doom cover, mate. Yeah, you, you're right. And I, do you know what? I need to really focus on some Doctor Doom keys before it gets too late. I'm going to show you one in a minute, actually, which I think has got all the potential in the world. It's a, a bit of a sleeper hit for me. Okay, Disney Plus. We've got, of course, the Secret Invasion show coming very soon. Here is Secret Invasion issue number one. Uh, this is, of course, the story arc in which the shape-shifting race of the aliens, the Skrulls, have invaded Earth and are taking over Marvel's key figures and heroes. I'm really interested to see how this is going to play out and what kind of budget they have. I'm hoping it is an upgrade on what we've had so far from the uh, Marvel MCU shows. But that's a lovely Del Otto cover. I've got one of those to list very soon as well. 
I've got Secret Invasion issue number eight. And this is a variant. This is a, uh, the reason I picked this up. This is the first appearance of a group called the Cabal, uh, a, a team that are basically in my encyclopedia. And this is the one in 25 U incentive. That was a freebie from my mum. Yeah. <laughs> um, up next, I do have Secret Warriors issue number two, but uh, I think that's upstairs. Forgot to put this in this uh, pile, but I do have Secret Inv Warriors issue number six. This is where Madame Hydra is revealed to be Contessa Valentina Allegra de la Fontaine. Um, I think that character has all the potential, which was an absolute bargain. Um, yeah, just a, a great character. She, In her own words, she is going to be here for a while and she is going to be a lot uh, darker and funnier than Nick Fury. Let's get this one. This is an undervalued key, in my opinion. Secret Wars Battle World. And this is issue number two. And this is the uh, first printing. There is a second printing, so go careful. Uh, this is the first appearance of War Machine. It was the, the day as Ross. But more importantly, this is the first uh, scripts penned for Marvel by Donny Cates. Okay, and that's, it comes in a backup story in this issue. So look out for this one. You can pick this one up in dollar boxes. I actually picked up uh, Donny Cates' first uh, professional work in, I think it was a Dark Horse Presents book. I picked that up for 50p, I think, and it goes for 20 to 30. Sticking with that Secret Wars Battle World, we've got issue three. And this is the prototype of uh, Batch H, which is basically Hulk with Wolverine claws. Of course, Weapon H came later in Totally Awesome Hulk. And I have that first appearance. I remember that was the one of the books that really got me started back into uh, the new titles. I was more of a back issue guy before then. Here's a book, I think, again, with all the potential in the world. This is uh, Secret Wars issue number two. Uh, Secret Wars two, sorry, issue number three. Hello, Tony Fett. Hiya, pal. Thanks for stopping by. It means a lot. Um, this is the first full appearance of The Beyonder in his ongoing human form with dark, curly hair. Yeah, and uh, Beyonder has been rumoured for a long time to be coming into the MCU. Uh, I paid just a pound for that in the Imaginarium in Western. If any of my UK subscribers are watching this, check out the Imaginarium. Brilliant books. Yeah, I, I agree, Tony. He is a great character. Uh, let's get a sensational She-Hulk book put out there. All She-Hulk books are going up in price right now. This is Sensational She-Hulk issue 15. Who knows? We might see this incarnation. This is the first appearance of the grey She-Hulk. I have the first appearance of the red She-Hulk. I showed that in my Hulk showcase. And uh, I can't wait. Do you know what? Of all the MCU Disney Plus shows, the two I am most excited for is... Uh, we've got the first appearance of both. And uh, I just think She-Hulk is my one I'm looking forward to the most. It's meant to be very comedic. And uh, if she's anything like she was in the animated uh, Hulk show, we're in for a, a real bargain. Up next, we got a couple of Sentry books. I showed Sentry number one, his first appearance in one of my Big Keys showcase. This is a later volume. This is issue number four. And this is the first cameo appearance on Origin of the new Sentry, the, mer the merged personas of Robert Reynolds and The Void. Now, there are just 17,965 copies of this. And uh, this one was going easily upwards of 30 quid at one point. I picked this up in a shop in Cardiff that I no longer go to, the Comic Guru. Uh, if you want to check out my ramp video, please do. Uh, £2.99 for that. To go with that, I have issue number five. And this is the first full appearance of that new Sentry character. Excuse the airplane outside. That's the first pile of books through. But I've got two more big stacks to get through, guys. So this might go on with a little while. Apologies. Really appreciate everyone stopping by. Uh, let's get a nice Bronze Age book out there. Nice 35 center. I think it should be in everyone's collection. This is Shogun Warriors, issue number one. Just a, just a fantastic, fun book. Um, yeah, this is basically where pilots are... Uh, Sorry, what's that? Get, get your way to... Yeah, I know, mate. I know that book has been on my radar for so long with that HBO Max show coming. Um, I like the character in Swamp Thing and 
I actually saw the Madame Xanadu number one uh, just a while ago for under 10 quid. Kicking myself now. But like I say, we all got regrets, haven't we? I paid 91p for this, the first appearance of the Shogun Warriors team. Basically humans that are piloting giant robot protectors. I've never seen um what what show is awesome. Um is there a show was there a Shogun Warriors show or are we on about Swamp Thing? I enjoyed Swamp Thing, I've got to be honest. I I don't I don't know whether they were on about making it yeah, Swamp Thing. Yeah, it, it was dark, wasn't it? I enjoyed it. Um I thought it had all the potential in the world. I, I like the Blue Devil character in it as well. I'm a big fan of the Blue Devil. Let's get a couple more She-Hulk books going. And uh, this is a book. She-Devil, uh, She-Hulk issue 22. Yeah, I've got Blue Devil's first appearance. Uh, this, of course, is the first appearance of the scroll Jacinda. And uh, in this issue, she is disguised as Jennifer Waters. This book has been going for 30 plus. I have had about four or five of these and I've made some good coin on it. Uh, this is my best copy, I paid two quid for this in Cardiff. Well, we see just in, the, in that She-Hulk show. Um, every possibility, of course, we're getting a lot more scrolls coming into Secret Invasion. To go with the first cameo appearance, we could never find the first full appearance until recently. And this book is really starting to get out there. Hi, Slim. Oh, thank you so much for uh, stopping by, my friend. Uh, I'm pretty nervous, so uh, I'm going to have to stop by one of your live streams to get a bit more confidence and get on with you guys at some point. This is the first full appearance of Jacinda in She-Hulk issue 23, and I picked this up in Out of This World in Worcester recently. Yeah, guys, if you do like what you see, please give the thumbs up and all that jazz. Um, it does mean a lot. Uh, up next, another book that has been, I do my weekly top 20s. This book has been in and out of it. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> this is uh, Silk number one. We all know this book, guys, don't we? Just the uh, the first premiere of this issue. And Silk is now in development as a TV show from the Sony-verse. Hi, em Empire. Hey, brilliant to see you, Paul. Thank you so much for stopping by. Yeah, great. <laughs> Thanks for the support. I'm very nervous, as you can probably tell. This is the first appearance of a uh, character called Dragon Claw in this issue as well. I picked this up for one pound thirty-three, and uh, I've never wanted normally go with issue ones, but uh, I couldn't leave it for that price. Not if there's too much in the guts. Okay, let's get into a couple of Silver Surfer books. Sadly, I don't have any Silver Age Silver Surfer, and I've showed off one or two keys prior. Uh, this is Silver Surfer issue number thirty-four. And this is where Thanos is resurrected on the last page of this issue. Thanks, Chop and Drop. Yeah. Um, like I say, I, I, I do a lot of research. I don't know if I can show you on some of these books. I put notes on everything. You can see here, I've got the store where I paid for it. Just a lot of good info to look back on. Um, I don't know. That's probably the OCD store. Yeah, like I say, I think that's an underrated book. I would pay 10 quid for that. Uh, this can go for 25 plus on a good day. In fact, two or three of these. Up next, uh, I'm just going to include this one. A couple of characters from my encyclopedia. This is issue 61. And uh, this one is signed. I got this one signed in the uh, Gloucester Con. Uh, sorry, in the Birmingham Con of 2019 by the uh, writer Ron Mars. Uh, writer Mom, Ron Mars. He was a lovely guy. Got quite a few books signed from him that day. Uh, yeah, like I say, the first appearance of the Collection Agency group in that book. And then on to issue 69, uh, again signed by Ron Mars. And this is the first appearance of Morg the Executioner. These books you can find in your dollar boxes. But uh, with Silver Surfer coming to the MCU, I think they're just, I think they could pay off. This one, of course, has uh, some real value to it. This, I didn't even know we had this book until I checked my collection. This is Silver Surfer 81, and this is the first appearance of Tyrant. And Tyrant uh, was rumoured for a long time to be coming into uh, one of the Cosmic movies. Yeah, there's some fantastic artwork, Empire, in these Silver Surfer books. I would love to get the first, you know, the early Silver Surfers. I would love to get that uh, first appearance of Mephisto. That's high on my radar. I will get that at some point. Uh, this is a book that was on my radar for the longest time. I could never find it. This is Silver Surfer Annual 6. And this is the first appearance of uh, Legacy. It was Jenis Bell, the son of Captain Marvel. And uh, uh, is it Eliseus? Or Eliseus? 
Just a pound for that one, though. Again, that was going for £20 plus at one point. Uh, up next, just a recent book, but uh, Silver Surfer Black, issue number one. 50p for it. Couldn't leave it there for that. This is the first appearance of the corrupted gods that serve as Knoll's sentries. And that's the regular Trad Moore cover. But the reason I'm showing issue when the first printing is I actually had a couple of copies of this. This is that second printing that was going for 50 plus at the moment. It's a fantastic uh, null cover. And uh, that comes from Mike Diodato. And that is known as the spoiler cover. But it's just absolutely stunning, isn't it? Yeah, Silver Silver Black Eye was fun. Was fun. I didn't I don't know whether I got on with the artwork too much, but I thought it was a darn good uh, read of Hulk at the moment I have his first appearance which I'll show you in a little while but um I'm after issue one of Scar Son of Hulk now but I do have issue two and this is the first appearance of a character that was in my encyclopedia and that is Hiro Kala Hiro Kala uh, just two quid for that cheap key like you say with Scar turning up apparently who knows where that'll lead and um I've got a feeling we may say see a bomb as well because that Hulk Agents of Smash animated show, you had the Hulk, of course, we're getting. You've got the Red Hulk with the Deus Ross. You've got Scar, and you've got A-Bomb and She-Hulk. And four of those are in there. Oh, pal. Of course you can, mate. Here we go. Iron Man. I picked this up for £2.50 in a local shop here. It was like a home bargains here in the UK and they've got a few others there's a Thor one among others uh, you can't leave them there for £2.50 my mum usually is the one who's uh, sorry about the aeroplane outside thanks Lib yeah Scar has been absolute fire um, and like, like I say with that Agents of Smash show I reckon A-Bomb's just a matter of that is a book that's going to explode because you've got the four of the other five members in that team. Here's a book, one of the very first uh, minor keys that I picked up because I was only a DC collector for the first year and a half to two years, believe it or not. It was the Arrowverse that I blamed for costing me a small fortune. It was the, the Green Arrow show that I first started collecting all the keys for. That was back in 2016. So I was in a local like antique centre and they had this book here. And this was... Literally, the, I think the second Marvel book I ever picked up. This is the awesome Slapstick, issue number one. <laughs> the first appearance and origin of Slapstick, it was Stephen Harmon. Just a, a, a comedic character, a bit like, eh, really like a clown, isn't he? And we've also got the first appearance in this book, I think, of Michael Peterson, who later becomes Deathlock in Marvel. So, uh, pretty, uh, of course, uh, Michael, Peter Michael Peterson appeared in the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. TV show. Pound for that one. Here's another uh, book from, yeah, I do. Yeah, Slapstick's a, cr a cracking character. He has a chance to shine soon. I can see him coming in somewhere. This is Sleepwalker, issue number one. Classic, isn't it? And Sleepwalker is Rick Sheridan. Rick Sheridan. So it's the first cameo appearance of the villain from the show, uh, from the... Uh, Comic and that is Eight Ball. It was Jeff Hages. Classic nineties. You're right there, Paul. Classic nineties. You know uh, there were some books I missed out on the collecting in the nineties. It was just uh, I don't know whether it was a good thing or a bad thing. A lot of people say it's a great time to be collecting, and other people say it was just oversaturated. I don't know, but uh, I like it. And there's a lot of holographic covers. I know my good friend Comic Vantage, who is Lewis. He is always a uh, Showing off 90s books, especially the indie stuff. Okay, up next we've got a character that appeared in the Cloak and Dagger TV show. And that is uh, Strange Tales. This is the second volume from 1987. This is issue 8. And this is the first appearance of Mr. Jip. He was the villain in one of the seasons. I've only seen uh, three quarters of the first season so far, but it's okay. Of course, Cloak and Dagger crossed over with Runaways TV show, didn't they? Here's a recent AOK -OK, uh, that I picked up from Lyric Magic Moments, funnily enough, who was watching just now. This is, because uh, I was in Forbidden Planet and they had dozens and dozens of the issue number one on the shelves and I thought I should pick it up. Never actually got around to doing it. This is Strange Academy issue number one. 
yeah, so many first appearances in this. Um, and I missed out. And that we know what Strange Academy is doing right now. Absolute pure fire. Um, this is the second printing from Umberto Ramos. And a lovely A-OK. -okay. Crikey. You know when you're out collecting, you, I always seem to find new universe books. And uh, this book, more than any, that is star brand number one. Oh, my days. Yeah, so many uh, copies of this I've found over the years. Of course, star brand is Kevin Connor, £2.50 for this. But can I say, the majority of these books you can find for under a fiver, guys. But just a fun character. New Universe books never really took off. But that was one of the few exceptions, I think, that, like I say, was worthy to put in an encyclopedia. Here's a character I think we may see in the Hawkeye TV show. This is Solo Avengers, issue number one. And this is the first appearance of Trick Shot, the half-brother of um, Hawkeye. I know there's Barney Barton as well, isn't there? So I don't know how, uh, whether Trick Shot, which kind of Trick Shot this is, because I think there's two, isn't there? Two pounds for that one anyway. Don't know, I haven't read that book, I've got to be honest. Um, up next is a book that is within my top 20 a few weeks ago. This has been very hot because apparently there's a there's a movie coming. This is Slingers, issue zero. This is a very hard book to find. And uh, the first appearance of the Slingers team, which is Dusk, Ricochet, Hornet and Prodigy. A team of heroes assembled by the Black Marvel and given superhero identities formerly used by Spider-Man. Just £1.11 for that, though. And that is a Wizard Comics magazine giveaway. <sighs> Classic 90s again, mate. You're right. Let's get into just a couple of Submariner books. And uh, because, of course, Neymar is strongly rumoured to be the villain. Yeah, I will hold on to that one, Empire. You're down right. Uh, this is the only one I've ever found, actually. And I do an awful lot of hunting. Um, Couple of Submariner books. I, I want to get some more keys. This is issue 32. Nice copy though, really high grade. Uh, this is the first appearance of Lyra, was Lyra Morris. £1.22 for that. These Submariner books are really going up in value after the announcement with Black Panther. This book in particular, uh, I, I always thought this character has potential. This is Submariner issue 50, and what a gorgeous cover that is. Well, look at that. The first appearance of Namorita. Namorita. And uh, paid £10.98 for this copy on eBay. And this book's going upwards of 50 now, I believe. So a uh, bit of a steal there. Yeah, it is. Hi, Grimble. Nice to see you, pal. Yeah, it's a great issue, this one. Absolutely great issue. And like I say, uh, one of my LCSs has a lot of Submariner. They are pretty beat up, but I think I might just have to get them. Really nice to uh, see you, uh, Grim uh, Grimble. Okay, a couple of uh, supervillain team-up books that you might not know about. Here's a character, a villain. This is supervillain team-up issue number five. And this is the first appearance of a character called the Shroud, who is Maximilian Quincy Coleridge, who has the ability to summon and control darkness. All these kind of Marvel may have overpaid, but uh, this is the only copy I've ever found in this book. And you know when it comes to the Marvel Bronze Age, you get over here, you find as much pence copies as you do the sense copies. But when it comes to DC, very, very few pence copies of DC comics you find over here, which is surprising. Uh, here's a book, like I said, I alluded to this book earlier in the live stream. And this is a book I think has all the potential in the world. This is Super Villain Team Up, issue 14. And... Two big bads that we're going to have moving forwards are Magneto and Doctor Doom. Just a matter of time, this is their first ever meeting in this book. So I think this could well happen. Um, you know, who knows? Fantastic Four and the X-Men uh, team up against Doctor Doom and Magneto. This book has all the potential. £2.67 for that. Yeah, undervalued book, I think, for sure. Yeah, it's a lovely book. A lovely cover slim, really is. Okay, some Thanos books now. And uh, I showed off issue uh, uh, 13. Here it is. I'll show it again. I've had two or three of these. Uh, obviously, the first appearance of the Cosmic Ghost Rider, Frank Castle, who was once the Punisher until he became the Herald of Galactus. Uh, bought these for cover price. I've sold them a couple of these for 50 to 60. 
But the reason I brought that one out, I didn't show you the other copies. This is um, the third printing uh, from Jeff Shaw. That and do you know what? When I first started collecting, that Thanos run was one of the first runs I ever read in comics. So it shows how new I am to the hobby. That and it was Avengers No Surrender from Al Ewing. Those two runs really got me hooked. Uh, to go with that, I've got the, uh, the fifth printing from Jeff Shaw. Uh, 2016 Empire. Yeah, pretty, pretty new to it all. You know, Cosmic Ghost Rider is a... 13 uh, issue 13 of Thanos it's still a valuable book but it never really I mean it was going for over 100 at one point but it's really come down but any announcement and I can, I can imagine we'll see the Cosmic Ghost Rider in like a, an animated uh, feature let's get a couple of Thing books up just a couple to show you this is Thing issue 27 I always find Thing books they're everywhere aren't they cheap as chips this is the first appearance of Sharon Venture knows with these fantastic four movies we might see uh, she thing down the line two pound 75 for that one this book i've seen in a few people's hauls in the past issue 35 this is the first full appearance i believe of uh, that second miss marvel sharon ventura couple of thunderbolts books yeah you're right there grimble there, you find thing everywhere, don't you? Thunderbolts, issue number one. Now, this is the first cameo appearance of Halle uh, Takahama, who later becomes Jolt. It's also the first appearance of Megan McLaren. And she was a reporter, believe it or not, appeared in the Luke Cage uh, TV show. And uh, I've been reading, you know, I, I enjoyed the Luke Cage TV show uh, and even Iron Fist. Second season, obviously, much better than the first season. But I'm hearing... A lot now that we're getting John Berthnell back as Punisher, uh, Kristen Ritter back as Jessica Jones, and of course Charlie Cox as Daredevil. But it looks like um, Michael Coulter and uh, Iron Fist, I've met Iron Fist, can't even think of his name, uh, they're not coming back. But like I say, uh, just a minor character that appeared in the Luke Cage TV show, and the first cameo appearance of Jolt, effectively, who then goes on to appear in issue number four from 1997 and jolt was actually rumored for one of the disney plus shows i think it was for the falcon and the winter soldier but that never materialized uh, material materialized oh i told you i'm nervous let's get some totally hawk books out there ah my final poll to show you guys because i'm up to 45 minutes now uh i love amadeus cho as a character i think he's got all the potential in the world i He's, I've got his first appearance. Uh, it is water damaged, alas, but I might be sending it to a friend of mine to get pressed, see what he can do with it. But uh, totally awesome Hulk issue number one is the first appearance of Amadeus Cho as the Hulk. So it's the first appearance of Lady Hellbender. And uh, an undervalued book, I think, is a book that fluctuates in price. I paid £4.50 for this, but it can go as high as 20 I've seen it go for. This is the regular cover from Frank Cho. But I did pick up this absolute beauty recently. I paid £24.99 for this. This book, when I saw how much it was going for, and we're talking around about 200 I couldn't leave it there. And it's really nice high grade as well. I don't have too many incentives in my collection, but delighted to add that one. Uh, another totally awesome Hulk book that is really starting to rise in value is issue three. This was a pretty minor key for quite a while. This is the first appearance of the Kid Kaiju. It was K. Quaid. Okay, uh, a pound for that one. Issue 15, a recent pickup for me. This is the first unofficial appearance of the Protectors. Uh, it was Silk, Miss Marvel, Shang-Chi, Agent Jack Wu, and Jimmy Wu, and the Hulk. Yes. Okay, Empire. Yeah, interested. Yeah, do you know what? I, I collected back in the 80s. And I can remember having Avengers and Spider-Man books, but we're talking, I was young. Probably five, six, seven years of age. You know, that early 80s. Dread to think what my mum and dad threw out because I just got into other things like sports and things. But uh, I, I don't want to think about it. Um, but like I said, 
Oh, my man, for sure, mate. Absolutely, for sure. I know he collected Batman as well. And that would have been, like I say, early 80s. Would have been some really nice keys to have in the collection. But like I say, we've all got regrets, haven't we? So that's 15. That's the unofficial appearance. Issue 16 is the first official appearance. Look at that cover. That is just an absolutely stunning cover. Uh, first full appearance of the, or first official appearance of the Protectors team. Amadeus Cho is definitely coming, isn't he? It's just a matter of time. And I wouldn't be surprised to see him in like a, a Champions uh, TV show. Yeah, some brilliant covers. Absolutely brilliant. Um, here's a book I found two or three of. Uh, I've got to include it now. This is Truth, Red, White and Black. The first appearance, of course, of Isaiah Bradley, who later became Captain America. We saw him in the Disney Plus show. Paid 89p for this. I think I found another copy for 50p. At one point, this was going for over 80. I think we've probably seen the end of Isaiah Bradley, though. But I like the actor. He played um, John Jones's, uh, or the Martian Manhunter's father, didn't he, in the uh, Supergirl TV show. And voiced the Martian Manhunter in the Justice League Unlimited. Yeah, super hot bug. You're absolutely right. I met Al Ewing at a Leamington uh, Con a couple of years back. He signed 28 books for me that day. And I know he gets a bad rap. Um, apparently, he's not very nice, but he came across great with me. I had a photo with him, signed a few books. One of these was uh, The Ultimates, issue number one. That was signed in 2018. I have a photo with him somewhere. Um, here's a, a book that... Uh, uh, was really hot at one point, going for over 30. This is Ultimate Comics Spider-Man, issue 26. I think I've had three copies of this. Uh, made some good coin on it. This is the first appearance of the Ultimate Taskmaster. It was Anthony Masters. I've got uh, Avengers 195 and 196. But um, I think people are saying this might be the version that we get in the Black Widow movie. Talking of movies. Yeah, Slim. Yeah. I'm, I'm f actually finally getting into the Ultimate books. There's some crackers out there. Um, yeah, talking of movies, I've actually got back in the cinema this past week, which has just been absolutely fantastic. Seen three good films. I saw, uh, what did I see? Uh, the Hitman Bodyguard's Wife with uh, Ryan Reynolds and Samuel Jackson and Sama Hayek. Man, she had a potty mouth, but it was a lot of fun. That same sort of Deadpool humour. I saw The Quiet Place 2. Uh, which was absolutely brilliant. Uh, the kids in that are fantastic actors. Uh, Cillian Murphy, Murphy was brilliant in it. And uh, just a couple of nights ago, I saw Monster Hunters at the cinema. And uh, if you're a giant creature feature fan like myself, you will really enjoy that. Uh, special effects are great. Uh, okay, Ultimate Fantastic Four, issue 21. We all know this book, guys. The first appearance of the Marvel Zombies, and we're getting in that animated What If show. Couldn't find this one for the longest time, but I paid it five pound for this in 2019 at the Birmingham Con. Looking forward to that what if show. Yeah, it's for sure undervalued, for sure. Issue 22 is the second appearance of the Marvel Zombies. Skipping now to issue 54. And uh, this is the first appearance of the Agatha Harkness in the Ultimate Universe. Of course, this is the younger version. I have Fantastic Four issue 94 from the first run, but this is the, basically the, the kind of version we got in the One Division show. To see some sort of big bad at the end, instead we got White Vision. More, I'll show you that book in a minute. Uh, Ultimate Spider-Man issue 98 is the first, oh, I love this cover, the first appearance of Spider-Woman of the Ultimate Universe. Um, Jessica Drew later becomes Black Widow in the all-new Ultimates issue number one. Three quid for that. Keep looking for that uh, Ultimate Spider-Man uh, Venom book, but I can never find it. Another Ultimate book. Now, this is the Ultimates issue number one, a book that has been really hot of late. And, of course, due to the Falcon and the Winter Soldier uh, show, this is the first appearance of Aya, uh, one of the Dorian Milaje, who was in, uh, started off in the Black Panther and Infinity War movie. Then we saw her in that uh, show, £1.50 for that. I've had two or three of those. Here's another book, for some reason, got extremely hot. I would never pay more than I did for it. This is The Ultimate, issue number two from 2015. The second printing goes for actually more. 
Right now, this is the first appearance of the Galactus, the Lifebringer, a gold armored and opposite in his best known intentions as the consumer of worlds. So I guess he was a good version of Galactus if there is such a thing. One pound eleven for that. A uh, couple of recent pickups for me now. Undervalued books, in my opinion. This is the Ultimates issue number two. And this is the first appearance of Nick Fury bearing a likeness uh, to Samuel L. Jackson. Of course, the first Nick Fury we got on screen, I have that in my DVD collection. David Hasselhoff. Oh, my days. We've got a bit of an upgrade now with Samuel, haven't we? Um, but uh, this first appearance of Ultimate Fury is in Ultimate Team Up issue number five. And another book from that run, The Ultimates, issue eight. And this is the first appearance of the Chitauri, uh, obviously the alien race that was in the Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy, a lot of the MCU movies. £1.50 for that, undervalued. Rounding the bases now, guys. We've got uh, issue one of Vision and the Scarlet Witch, issue number one. And... Uh, just the premier issue that was going for double figures at one point. I um, have issue 12, the big money book, where we got uh, Speed and Wiccan as best. This is Vote Loki. And uh, this is issue number one. Obviously, Loki is apparently going to be wearing this headpiece and going for election of some kind in the show. Hope we see more than that in the next episodes. I've been disappointed. Uh, cover up by Trad Moore on that one. £2.60 for that. Uh, nice Bronze Age book now is Warlock, issue number 10. Don't see this in too many halls anymore. This is the first appearance of the Inbetweener. And uh, the first appearance of the Sanctuary uh, vehicle that was in the Thor Ragnarok and Avengers Infinity War movie. It's the first meeting between Thanos and Adam Warlock. And uh, we've got Thanos versus Magnus in this issue. We've got the origin of Gamora, the origin of Thanos. So much goodness to look at. £2.10 for that. Undervalued book. This book has been blowing up. This is War of the Realms, New Agents of Atlas, issue number one. Yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah, I, I love that cover. Love it. This can't be silver and bronze age covers for me. I know the artwork's better now. With all this uh, new technology and um, done digitally, but it, it, it's, it's you can't beat the classics like Jack Kirby for me. Uh, this is the first appearance, obviously, of the new Agents of Atlas team. Kevin Feige has recently come out and said that there is going to be a an Asian team going forwards. So many first appearances in this, including Luna Snow, Crescent, Low, Arrow, Wave. First cover appearance of Swordmaster. He appears in the next issue. 360 for that. Nice Bronze Age book now. This is what I'm talking about um, when we're talking about uh, covers that I like. Werewolf by Night, issue 13. Look at that. That's a cracker. This is the first appearance of Topaz, a powerful sorceress. £2 for that. Love it. Sticking with that volume. I, I think I may have showed this one before. I ha obviously have Werewolf by Night, issue 32. Uh, CGC 8.0. Sounds like I'm showing off, but it is my most valuable book. Uh, I do have issue 33, which is now really getting up in price. I always thought this one was so undervalued for the longest time. The second appearance of uh, the Moon Knight, Mark Spector, of course. Like I say, I'm looking forward to Moon Knight and She-Hulk the most when it comes to Disney+. Plus. Eight quid for this, for the second appearance of Moon Knight. Borrowed that book. Uh, a couple of West Coast Avengers books. Issue one from, from the first volume. Issue one of the, for, uh, the four issue limited series. This is the first appearance on Origin of the West Coast Avengers team. We got from the next volume, we got West Coast Avengers issue four and the first appearance of Master Pandemonium, who is a Martin Preston. 250 for that. Up next, we've got issue 44. And this book has just become a key on Key Collector's app. This is the first cameo appearance of John Walker as the US agent, apparently. Well, he's in the book, but I don't know about that. Of course, we got a... I, was a, I actually like the character of John Walker in The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Pound for that one. The big book, of course. West Coast Avengers, issue 45. Another book I never thought I'd stick into Mylar. 
first appearance of the colorless or white vision probably I don't think we'll ever see that white vision again but I could be wrong £1.19 for that West Coast Avengers issue 46 bit of an undervalued book in my opinion fun team the first appearance of the Great Lakes Avengers was Mr Immortal now Mr Immortal was actually going to be in the new Warriors uh, TV show got the first appearance of Big Bertha Dinosaur Dorman Flatman that is the Great Lakes Avengers team. Three quid for that. I keep finding this book. Issue 56 is the first cover appearance of the Dark Scarlet, who was, of course, Wanda Maximoff in a new costume with an evil persona. We kind of got that in the WandaVision TV show. Now, Scarlet Witch first appears in this form in the previous issue of 55. £4.50 for that in Worcester. A nice AOK next from my good friend Comic Vantage, a.k.a. Lewis. Uh, this is What If, issue 13. Uh, hypothetical story of Conan the Barbarian's adventures in the 1970s. It's effectively his first introduction into the mainstream. Comic Vantage Press, that book for me. This book is absolutely going crazy at the moment. I got on board with this. I always believed in this character. This is What If, featuring Planet Hulk, issue 7. Issue 7. Issue number 1. Uh, the first appearance of Scar, of course. Uh, Scar Banner, the son of Hulk, and Kara as a baby. Happening, actually. I could see if he was going to turn up anywhere, it could well be there. Okay, just probably a handful of books left to show you guys because I've been on nearly an hour now. Um, we've got, uh, I don't know how many of you know about this, but this is What the Xmas Special, number 10. This is actually the first appearance of Bart Simpson in comic books. Bart Simpson in comic books. So just a, a cheap key to be on the lookout for. He's in there, I've looked. <laughs> then we go to What The Issue number 20. And this is the first appearance of Pork Grind, a Spider-Ham universe version of Venom. £1.50 for that. With all these into the Spider-Verse movies. Yeah, it's just a... I, I'll see if I can dig it out in a sec. But uh, with these Into the Spider-Verse books, uh, movies, we may well see Port Grind down the line. Let's see if I can just show you where Bart appears in this book. Just give me a, bear with me a minute or two. But he's definitely in here. I know you have to really look for it. Don't think I'll be able to find it. Is just literally. Oh, hang on. Yeah, there he is. Can you see that, guys? Down at the bottom there. First Bart Simpson in comics. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I actually had this book and then I, I, I sold it and I was gutted because I don't ever sell keys if I've only got one of them. And then key collectors put it up and I thought I've just sold that so I had to go and find another copy uh, up next uh, we got Winter Soldier recent volume issue number two and I don't pick up too many new books but this is the first cover and full appearance of uh, RJ a teenage assassin working for Hydra appears on the final page it's like basically a cameo cover price for that this character is rumoured I think for the Shang-Chi movie, if I'm not mistaken. This is Exterminators, issue number one. Uh, 50p for this. This is the first appearance of Wizkid. Takashi Taki Matsuya, who is, like I said, rumoured for that Shang-Chi movie. Really beat up copy of this book once for a pound. Uh, so I've only been able to find the reprint since. But it is Young Avengers, issue number one. The, this is the um, Marvel Legends um, reprint. As you can see, it is not for sale. Paid £1.66 for that. But even this book goes for quite a lot of money now. We're talking 30, uh, 30 quid plus. Just two books left to show you guys. We've got Young Avengers Presents, uh, Stature. This is the origin of Stature. Who, of course, is Cassandra Cassie Eleanor Lang. Who we are going to see again in the MCU. £1.17 for that. And my final book, guys, before I leave you all, because I've been on absolutely ages, is Young Avengers Presents Hawkeye, issue number six of six. 
And this is the first meeting of Hawkeye and Kate Bishop where he approves of her using the code name Hawkeye. Okay, so uh, yeah, thanks ever so much for the guys that have turned up to support me. It means an awful lot. Um, I got through a ton of books. It took about an hour. Um, I'm not even sure how to stop this uh, <laughs> live stream. But guys, thanks a million. And uh, thanks, Lyric. It means a lot for you to turn up. Thanks for everyone. If you like what you see, give the thumbs up. Thanks, guys. And I'll speak. Cinnamon! <laughs> Better late than never, my friend. <laughs> Go back and watch. How there's some great some books. Thanks, guys. Thanks ever so much for everyone who showed. And uh, meeting of